Now one of the problems out here is flies. It's a lot worse in summer. This is winter, so this is kind of mild, but it, it gets really bad. So we've got to wear these. That kind of helps. We just started out from our Coward Spring campsite on a five kilometer trek, walking trail, and I believe there are a couple of uh, historical sites along the way to see. It's early winter, so the, the temperatures are really nice, 22 degrees right now, I think. So there's the cemetery we were told of. I'm assuming this might have been uh, someone traveling died at the age of four and a half years in 1899 early days of the gone could have been those who were traveling or someone who lived or people who lived here at Coward Springs at the time because it was a bustling railway siding so there was obviously people living here so it could very well be, you know, people who lived here as well. We've been walking for the past two and a half kilometers and we've had this bird following us, behind us. Yeah, he's practically walking with us. Hope you can see it on the camera. <laughs> when we stop, he stops. And then he comes with us again. <laughs> oh, you're still going home with us, isn't it? Yeah? Let's see how far he comes with us. Now, walking along to the Coward Springs camp area, which is basically where the uh, 
railway siding was, I couldn't help but notice all these broken bottles. If you see over there, everywhere you look, it's nothing but broken bottles. Back in the old Ghan days from the eight, late 1800s, right up until 60, the mid 60s, there was a hotel here, there was a pub here. Uh, the pub basically, you know, came to an end once the Ghan moved on. But, um, so these bottles are from the pub from those days. So you could kind of say these are like historic bottles. So I picked up a bit of, uh, I always like to take souvenirs to take back some, you know, something from each trip. And I picked up a souvenir to take with me. This one here. And this one says, um, there's no year mentioned, but it says property of the Adelaide Bottle Cooperative. I'm going to go home and do some research. Try and figure out how far back this will go. But yeah, that's my souvenir from Coward Springs Hotel back in the day. Most of uh, Central Australia is um, underneath it is what's known as the Great Artesian Basin. That's deep underground, millions and millions of years color, um, uh, worth of um, river systems underneath, underground. Now, as this water travels, it finds cracks um, in the in the in the ground and works. The water basically pushes up to the surface, and and that forms like natural springs and then also at the same time over time these um, because of the, the um, salt minerals in these in the water the minerals gets deposited on the surface of the ground and then wind blows dust over it and over millions of years it forms what are called mounds mounds if i'm pronouncing it correctly and some some of these mounds will eventually become extinct and become and turn into like hills and to give you an idea of the great artesian basin the it's it's basically it's mostly concentrated around the on central australia spilling into three states uh south australia new south wales and queensland if i'm not mistaken and that covers the, the basin covers around one-fifth of the Australia's landmass. The aridness is something that that amazes me. It's still very arid. Um, obviously gets very little rain. Um, this this area I believe gets no more than 120 mils of rain each year. That That's practically nothing. But it's very arid despite having so much abundance of water beneath us. If you keep watching you can see the little bubbles popping up. Well, that's basically the water coming up from underneath. So it's a natural spring and the water's coming up and you see the bubbles in various spots.
as we headed further southwards on the Unadada track, heading away from Coward Springs, um, we were also getting closer to the end of our outback trip. But there was one more siding, Ghan siding, that we wanted to stop and look at. This was Kurdi Muka. As we drove into the Kurdi Muka siding, um, we kind of got a eerie sensation um, that maybe because we were the only ones at this location at that point in time, maybe. But at the same time, it was also kind of a pleasant surprise because we found the siding to be in uh, pretty well intact. Um, the buildings, the three or four kilometers of railway track, and then of course um, the uh, another one of those um, desalination plants, they were all pretty well looked after. And I think this was due to the work of the Ghan Railway Restoration Association or Society. I'm not too sure if they're still very active, but I have read online that uh, they've been putting in a bit of work to preserve these historical sites. So, and thanks to them, we, we got to see this siding and, and spend a bit of time enjoying it. Um, it's our last day of our outback trip, uh, which is kind of kind of sad because uh, there's so much more we would like to have seen. Uh, there were places where we visited, but we didn't have enough time to, or we could have spent longer. But overall, it's been a, quite an um, educational trip for us while it was still uh, enjoyable and relaxing. Uh, we learned so much about this area, um, the heritages, the uh, and the natural history. And today, um, as a last place of stop before we head back home, we've come to um, another opal mining ta town called Andamuka. It's kind of fitting that we started with Kuba Pedi, which is considered the opal mining capital of the world. And, and we are finishing off with Andamuka, which is also an opal mining town, but kind of a lot smaller than Kuba Pedi. So we're here um, at a display of Andamuka mud huts. Now, compared to um, Kuba Pedi, where people lived underground and still do, uh, here in Andamuka they didn't live underground, but what they did was they built these mud huts out of uh, clay, and that was pretty much what kept the houses cool. And there's a display of these mud huts so back in the day, in the early 1900s, this is a typical dwelling. So these are, um, again in comparison to Kuba Pedi, these are known as semi-dugouts. So in Kuba Pedi it is completely dug out underground. 
these are some of them uh, some of these cottages are semi dug out so you you get the um, you get the rock and it's kind of dug into it you can see that's what they mean by semi dug out because you still got the roof on the outside uh, it's not completely inside but part of it is into the into the rock or into the hill and its outside is lined with stone and clay now over here if you look at this house it's actually been built on three levels so that's your first level there and you get your second level and, th and third level so let's try and go in and see how these levels work level one that's pretty much the sleeping area here then you have a second level they actually had a rainwater collection system as well just like we do today in harsh country like this where there's very little rain whatever little that comes they obviously collected and so you're here into the second level more like a workshop area people could have slept here as well old wheelbarrow there up here to the third level and actually from the third level you could look down into the second level. So we've just come to the end of our trip through the out part of the outback. We've come full circle. We started here in uh, Pimba, which is just outside of Woomera, and we've come back. So we've done the outback and then we come back here to Pimba. We are pretty much filling up and then heading back home. And it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, there's so much we saw. Uh, we try to keep our driving time as um, little as possible so that we get to spend a lot of time seeing what's out there and yet we didn't get to see everything we would have liked to have seen there's so much out there old Ghan track remains geological places of interest and so much more meeting locals getting to know about their local stories so we certainly will be back but this has been a, a brilliant trip for us